So what I do in the creative industry is I represent predominantly music of global origin, music of black origin, and also put on community events such as the Cultural Vibrations Poetry Festival event to um, bring more visibility to maybe underrepresented groups. Well, I'm really excited about facilitating a poetry workshop focused on pidgin and um, patois because these uh, ways of speaking have had a really big influence on uh, the British spoken word and poetry scene, but with my Jamaican background as well, and also, you know, my social contacts, you know, a lot of uh, African people from West Africa, and also the fact that I listen to a lot of Afrobeat. So these argo, slangs, dialects are a very big part of British uh, culture and the way people speak today mm. and perform. Mm. Oh, I mean, it's amazing. Uh, it's a great opportunity for me to be able to come out and be creative first of all, but as well as to be able to share my creativity with the whole of the city and I guess to the wider world, because I believe it goes out everywhere, you know. People's identity is very much um, linked to the way they speak and the words they use and how they express themselves. But I think it's very interesting the way uh, a lot of pidgin and patwa now is part of Britain's lingua franca. Everybody's using um, words from pidgin and from patwa in the normal uh, every day. It, it's gone very far and very wide and that's been very much due to dance, music, culture and fashion. I think um, festivals like Nottingham Poetry Festival and other festivals around Nottingham City just shows how innovative we are and forward thinking in regards to embracing not just creativity but also the sense of community building and bringing us all together to connect and create and just have a good time. It's more than just words, it's more of a cultural thing. So I find it very powerful. So and, and you think it helps you express yourself? No, that's, that's how people get to know different foods. Everyone knows what fufu is now. I've got a song called fufu, you know what I mean? It's something simple like that, but everyone knows what fufu is, and that's through poems about fufu, or you know what I mean? Like things like that have, it bridges the gap, it educates as well. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's very important um, because of the different audiences that you're reaching out or appealing to it kind of creates that uh, bridge that some people perhaps would have never been able to kind of find by themselves. But if you put it through music and you say stuff like, hey, I don't want no wahala. It means I don't want no problems. Everybody goes, oh, what's that, no wahala? And eventually all you hear people saying, oh, I don't want no wahala. You know, that kind of vibe. <laughs> you get me, bro. <laughs> That's one English one, but I mean, you know, there's a lot of, Jamaican words like ting and, you know, brer and all this sort of um, speaking, but also um, wetting is this and wetting, you know, there's a lot of Nigerian pidgin as well that's coming in. What is, wetting is this, wetting is that, um, you know. So I love it because Britain seems to be uh, an English in particular. You know, we have so many cultures that have impacted the British language from, you know, India and due to imperialism and colonialism. But, you know, today we have a very rich culture of, of language. And um, I also work as a vocal coach and a dialect coach. So I, I love the musicality of different dialects and accents. It was great to be able to come here and obviously represent my area and represent Nottingham as well. Um, hopefully today runs very smooth. I'm a great believer in, you know, you know, the vibe is right and things come together. So I think, um, you know, it's an amazing opportunity for me to be here, so I'm just thankful and grateful and hopefully it all turns out for Thank you.
must get a two, must get a three in Ash Kalaloo. Baby can walk and the baby can talk and the baby can eat with a knife and fork. <laughs> It's been great to be here and um, it's raining this morning but hey that's you know it didn't stop me from coming out today and I've been really really excited about it so I'm glad to be here but to come back again next year. Oh it's been amazing. We weren't actively encouraged to speak Patwa as, as children growing up, but it's very much you speak English. You know, that's because we're in England now. So it's been nice actually immersing myself back into that creativity and that culture. And actually it's nice to have a, a green light and a bit of permission to actually speak in Patwa and try and write in Patwa because my, I'm not a very good speller anyway, so I tend to spell phonetically. So it's right up my street to be able to write a poem in Patwa. So it was a bit of a struggle, you know, some English but I did manage to write something, so I was really pleased. Yeah. I think, especially for me, because I do feel that I'm probably one of the older ones within, you know, the poetry feel getting into it. Um, and you don't always, I look for someone to represent me, so I do feel that this is a chance for me to represent. A lot of my poetry walks, talks about my own experience, facing children, navigating the workplace and things like that. And I hope that I can sort of reach out and someone will probably identify themselves in what I'm, I'm saying and everything like that. It legitimises it because oftentimes some people, some of my elders say, past and present, would have said it's bad language, don't speak it, it's not eloquent, you know, it's not wise or whatever. So for me, actually having it legitimised and being spoken about and other people from different cultures coming and embracing it, it legitimises it and so I feel quite excited and I feel proud of my heritage. Yeah.